guys are going to be in this seriously battling and want to argue jurisdiction, which is a very good defense on almost anything they can pull on you, you're going to have to read these cases. Erie Railroad versus Tompkins, recorded at 304, that's volume 304, U.S., page 64 is where it starts. It's vital that you understand these arguments. I just finished battling a United States attorney and we were arguing and he's talking about, this is all gibberish. And I told him, I said, sir, I don't think you're well read on the law. All you got to do is read several of these cases and they'll tell you, one, there is a duality of citizenship, two, it has to be clearly defined, and three, I have defined it. And now I'm asking you to prove that I'm not a party. Or prove that I am a party. You tell me. It's your burden. You're the one making the complaint. You make the complaint, you get the burden of proof. Who says so? McNutt versus General Motors Acceptance Corporation, 56 Supreme Court, section 5, or page 502. You made it, you prove it. Okay? You don't prove it timely, I motion to dismiss. Fair state of cause of action for which relief can be granted. And I will beat your little tail. Well, I would highly recommend you get to busy to prove it. Well, if you think the stuff don't work, let me tell you something here. Right here, right today, government came, told me, motion to dismiss, right? United States of America hereby moves pursuant to federal rules of criminal procedure for leave to dismiss the indictment in the case to support the statutes, okay? Now, <laughs> They can't argue. They give me a certificate of service. Order dismissing indictment, which the judge will sign. The government having moved to dismiss the indictment in the case of this court being fully advised in the premise that is ordered in the indictment of B and the hereby is dismissed with prejudice and that the defendant's bond is canceled it is so ordered and adjudged. Wherefore, the United States requests that this court enter the attached order dismissing the indictment without prejudice, but we'll figure that out. We'll fix that up. See, I don't care if we go to court, because I know who's going to win. And I pray to God that he'll help me do that. So if they want to go to court, I tell them, make my day. When I'm in the court, the guy says to me, well, we could get you for an income tax evasion. And you might win one, but you won't win them all. I looked at him most calmly, and I said to him in the clearest and gracious language, I said, sir, I'm going to advise you to go look in them law books real carefully because I'm going to tell you straight arrow, I have had occasion to look in them law books. And I'm telling you, sir, if you bring that complaint against me, I'm going to tell you to make my day. Because I'm a pretty serious fellow, and I'm not going to fool with you. I'll sue your socks off and attach everything you own, bank business and home. So the best thing I can tell you is before you make a complaint, sir, I would highly recommend that you seriously consider the merits of your facts before you go writing a bunch of dribble. And when we got him today, he's talking about, well, your briefs are nothing but gibberish. So we asked him, he said, well, on our proposed order to have it dismissed, do you want us to put it down there for uh, good gibberish shown or just generally good cause shown? So he got a little red in the face and stormed out. But the bottom line is, if you know your facts and you got your stuff together, I'm telling you people out there in TV land, you can do this stuff. I, I, as God is my judge, I, I'm a truck driver, I'm a, I've been an engineer for a while, I've, uh, I'm a fisherman, a hunter, and a guide. Uh, I, I'm a regular person. I just read a lot. Okay. I know people like to add stuff in the game, but I, I'm a regular citizen of the United States. I love my country and its constitution. And uh, I'm not fooling around. I want them to honor my constitution, and I don't think that's too much to ask. I think a lot of fine soldiers paid for it. Maybe we've had a lot of patriots. Some of the finest people I've ever known have paid for it. Uh, I especially uh, tout uh, Donald Costu, who was the uh, editor of the Constitutionalist newspaper and uh, the, the initiator and starter of the uh, Justice Prose movement in this area. Uh, he was a great man. He was a courageous man. Uh, he was found shot to death in his home with a bullet in his nose because obviously he stuck his nose in places it shouldn't have ought to been. He was a tireless defender of the people and the Constitution. Many a time we uh, cruised the countryside uh, doing meetings hither and yon. He wore a white cowboy hat, which we used to joke about. Good guys wear white hats. Uh, he was a, an exceptional personality. He lost everything he owned, fighting to the death. 
and uh, I I uh, I especially offer my my serious prayers for his soul and for the soul of all patriots who have suffered tremendous things to uh, put on this constitution and to keep us going uh, the people with the WWCR radio there uh, God bless you uh, Radio Free America Tom Ballantyne uh, Bill Cooper uh, the infamous uh, Jack McLam from uh, Vampire Killer 2000 the uh, there's a uh, so serious, serious battlers out here, folks, uh, myself included. There's quite a few patriots all around. Um, I can't tell you the names of the people that I feel absolutely privileged to know because the list would be so long here it would take another two hours just for the tape. But I can tell you some exceptional people, and some of them are on bond and they can't be doing that. So, <laughs> so I, I'm respecting their... You know, some of the things, the infamous Eugene May, E.J. May. Uh, there's just so many. The infamous No Tax Jim, James Gordon Lott. Uh, I mean, the names are endless. Um, so I'm telling you folks out here, there's a lot of good people out here that are pulling for you, that have risked a whole lot, have gone to jail, have stood out in rain, protesting. <laughs> uh, the infamous Dave Franklin, who is one of the most leading arguers on constitutional issues of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction. Um, the outstanding uh, Art Morris, who published the book uh, uh, The Greatest Swindle Ever Told, which is about 4,000 pages of documentary evidence on income tax uh, situations. Uh, we're going to share you a couple of arguments in the end, and then we're going to kind of close it off here uh, until the next time. But uh, I, I want to thank you very much for inviting me into your home, and uh, hopefully we haven't bored you to tears, and at the same time you will have a new uh, love of your constitution and your country, and that you will uh, push like hell to make sure these people understand, hey, this is America, pal. Last time I checked, there's a flag on a pole out there, and it's an American flag. We don't want no blue flag out there. We want that American flag out there. And we got a constitution, and we're going to keep it. And if you don't like it, move. Preferably someplace out of here, like Russia or other places. If you like that kind of government, go for it. Knock yourself out. That's what that's what free America is all about. You got a right to any idea you like, just so you don't injure your neighbor. You got a right to free speech, but you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Got me? Does that make sense? Okay. So if you don't like it here, move. You want? You don't want to. Exercise your constitutional rights, that's your prerogative, but if you get abused, don't say we didn't tell you. Because, uh, God kind of wants us to do this thing. Because this is, this is his holy land, and he's hoping that we're going to have enough hair on our tail feather to do it. Now, I want to get into a couple other arguments. One of the things I want to tell you about is procedure. If you're going to go to court and you're going to be your own attorney, by the way, this is the infamous no tax Jim. He just died, God rest his soul. The infamous James Gordon Lott. I helped the gentleman do his appeal briefs to the U.S. Supreme Court, and I can tell you he was one hell of a gentleman. He can quote Tragedy and Hope, Quigley's Tragedy and Hope from, uh, from the hip, from memory. And he just passed away. Just recently he died. I want you to see how he died, too. Where does it says? He was alone when he died, Monday and no services planned, and they cremated his body. He fought to the end. To his last day, he was on the Mark Scott program. There's another exceptional patriot, Mark Scott. I, I can't speak highly enough for the courage it takes to come on the radio and tell God's truth. Uh, there's a lot of people like him. Tommy McIntyre, uh, Mike Reagan. Uh, we could get you a list a mile long. There's patriots that come on and tell it like it is. J.P. McCarthy is another one that gets on there and tells it like it is. I remember this one casual time he got Gus Hall on, and J.P. said to Gus Hall, he says, Gus, don't you get tired of losing? Because Gus was running for president on the Communist Party ticket, and Gus turned.